Hey guys, what's up? Jan here from Functional Body Unit. Today we're going to talk about how you can improve and develop more knee strength of your knee joint, how you can get more and create more range of motion throughout the full range, throughout the full range in your knee, and how you can develop a better awareness overall, creating also healthier knees so that you can do the stuff that you love for as long as you want. Okay, so we're gonna cover and show you a small protocol, a small um, circuit that you can do maybe two or three times during the week to improve your strength of the knee and range of motion. So let's get straight into it. So guys, before we go into the actual exercises, it's really important to highlight that our knee gets rarely trained isolated, right? We're when we're thinking about, okay, our knee gets trained, maybe in some leg extensions, maybe in some squats, in some lower body um, exercises, of course, when we run, when we jump, but we don't necessarily strengthen um, the range of motion of our knee, right? Maybe in the mid range, especially in the mid range, as I said, as we squat, obviously we train knee flexion. And when we squat as to grass, okay, maybe we're training close to our max knee flexion, but actually what really matters in terms of um, knee health is the rotational capacity of your knee. Yes, your knee rotates and your knee should rotate, especially your tibia. Yeah, your tibia can rotate internally and externally. And depending on how much internal rotation you have, this determines how much workspace your knee joint has. If your knee is really, really locked up all the time and you only have a work flexion and extension, you probably lack a lot of internal and external rotation. So today we're really focusing on these rotational capacities to open up and create more workspace to get stronger knees in this external and internal rotation um, range. Because if you think about like MCL tears, ACL tears, those injuries happen most likely when we are in our outer ranges of motion, but also when our knee is rotated in an extreme way. So therefore, we want to bulletproof and strengthen these rotational capacities of our knee. First, we're going to go through internal rotation exercises. We're going to, go, you sh we're going to show you two, or I'm going to show you two exercises that you can do um, right after each other. And then we're going to show, um, I'm going to show you external rotation exercises. So, first of all, you don't need um, any kind of equipment. Maybe a weight, you can do that also with a partner. And some sliders would be also great. And of course, a soft surface here. So for our first exercise for the knee internal rotation, we're gonna use overcoming isometrics, maximum overcoming isometrics. Why are we gonna use that? Because isometrics really engage as much muscle fibers as possible for the certain area we want to activate or train, in this case, our knee internal rotation. So all the knee internal rotators, all the muscles that are involved here for knee internal rotation get, get fired up maximally. So our central nervous system already knows, okay, the muscles get contracted or needs to get contracted maximally because I want to force more internal rotation, but it's not happening because we're gonna put some weight on our ankle, so we cannot move, therefore these are isometrics. So, lay down here, so it's a little bit more comfortable here in this sideline position, and we're gonna need a weight plate. In this case, five, uh, 10 kilo weight plate should be enough because you shouldn't be able to move it. We don't necessarily go in our deepest um, internal, rotation, internal rotated position, of course, we want to set up in a good way, so 90 degrees here, 90 degrees in our, in our knee. And you already see, as my tibia is pointed down and my heel is elevated, this is already a strong internal rotated position of my knee. Of course, I could lift up into more internal rotation, but for the I am overcoming isometrics, it's not necessarily important to be at our maximum end range position to activate the muscle fibers we need, okay? Therefore, this position should be completely enough. We're gonna place the weight 
best case and the other side so that we actually cannot lift up our heel into more internal rotation, right? That's exactly what we want. We want that maximum overcoming isometric here. So we're gonna take a deep breath. And I try to fight pushing that knee down into the ground and my heel up into the air. Really fight as hard as I can for five seconds, three to five seconds. If you're new to isometrics, should be a great um, area to be in. Then relax and we're gonna, or you should do it at least three to five times for each rep for three to five seconds as hard, contract as hard as you can, try to think of lifting that heel against the weight as hard as you can, okay? If you're gonna progress, then you can adjust the time and maybe um, add five seconds. So do isometrics that last like 10 seconds. So still three sets of three to five reps and each rep then 10 seconds if you get, sorry, if you get stronger and progress, okay? So after the three sets, of course, do it on both sides. Then we're gonna find ourselves here in this position. And as I said, some sliders would be great. Uh, slippery surface with a sock underneath it also does its, does, it, does its job. From here, we're gonna go in this RNC grip, right arm under the right knee, place your hand on that tibia, and we're gonna then find our internal rotation that we just strained. So we activated the muscles maximally, so our central nervous system all, um, already fired up the region um, that, we that we wanted to train, right? So that's great. Now we find internal and external rotation first. Hold that internal rotation of your knee. You're gonna feel that by having your hand right on that tibia, on that bony structure right here. Withholding that knee internal rotation, we're trying to then slide. You can release the RNC rib, you can slide forward, holding it and still holding it strong and pull your heel back. So knee flexion plus internal rotation. Extend again and come back. As, as more, the more you get into extension of the knee, the less internal rotation you, you can maintain or um, can go in because it's just anatomically not possible to have any kind of knee rotation in a fully extended knee. Therefore, um, it gets harder and harder to hold on to the more you drive into knee extension. Okay. With the pullback, try to really push the heel into the ground, holding that internal rotation into max knee flexion. Do that a couple of times. I advise five to eight reps with really strong heel pull and pressure with the heel as you move in and out of extension and flexion, holding that internal rotation. So this is a great way to start strengthening the muscle fibers and the muscles involved for internal rotation with the isometrics. And then using these tissues through the range of motion of flexion, ex flexion and extension while holding your max internal rotation that you currently have. So this is a great way. Also three sets of five to eight, as I said, three sets of three to five here, each um, repetition hold for five second ISO. If you get better, you can do 10 seconds. Okay, obviously both right and left. I showed it here on the right, um, on my right knee, and this, sh this should feel great already, right up, especially when you do also the external rotation part. If you have pain or if you feel discomfort in your knee, just try not to push too hard with the isometrics. Maybe just go to 50% or 60%. If you get pain at 70, 80% of your max effort um, or before you reach your max effort, then just stay there and develop um, better tissue quality and a better time under tension or more time under tension and then slowly progress your up, way up to 70 or 80% of your max effort, right? So don't never push into pain or discomfort. Same here, if you just have too much heel pressure and you press, press the heel down and pull your knee back, 
and this is too much and you create pain or discomfort in your knee, then just push only slightly with 50-60%, okay? I'm gonna show you now the external rotation isometric and then again, um, we're gonna use this kinetic stretch for external rotation as well here on the, on the soft flooring. So same stuff here. Now, <clears throat> I wanna show you a different position. You can also do that in a frog position. We're gonna go here in this, <clears throat> in this external rotated position of the knee right here, right? So <clears throat> where our heel is not elevated anymore. So you see that this would be internal rotation. This would already be external rotation. So I obviously cannot lift off from here. So therefore, I can just place the weight plate on the side of my foot and then I can try to push against it, but now with my front foot trying to push up and my heel trying to stay down. Therefore, I initiate external rotation of that knee, of that tibia. Same stuff again, three sets of three to five repetition. Each repetition should be five seconds long. Okay, so really max effort here. If you can, if you cannot because of pain or discomfort, just push as hard as you feel comfortable. Next up, we have external rotation kinetic stretch. Really easy, same stuff as for internal rotation. Find it first. Really feel it with your hand. Go in and out of it a couple of times. Then hold your max external rotation and push your heel slightly into the ground or as hard as you can, again, depending on how, um, how much pain you have currently or um, yeah, how strong you are already. And then pull your foot back or your heel back, holding that external rotation and do it again five to eight times for three sets. So again, this can be performed two to three times throughout the week. Remember, recovery is key. Even though it might not feel like exhausting or hard, maybe you will, won't, you will, obviously you won't get sore from this, um, then you might think you can't do that every day. Please let your body recover. Please understand like tissue adaptation needs time and recovery and therefore don't push too hard and just do it, don't do it as often um, as every day. Okay guys, if you have um, other problems or if you have questions about general knee health and mobility, please put that in the comment section below. We're happy to answer them. If you really like this small little uh, protocol circuit and the information I gave you here in this video, please um, don't hesitate to subscribe, to give us a thumbs up and if you want to dive deeper into really getting stronger and more mobile, we also offer online coaching. We have a link in the description below where you can schedule your free call with me or with Leslie. And we're really happy to talk with you and help you to get stronger and more mobile. So guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.